Mr. Naylor, welcome, and uh, you've heard the 10-minute spiel before. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Michael Naylor. I represent the Pennsylvania School Librarians Association. I'm a retired school librarian, and now I'm on the faculty of Susquehanna University uh, preparing student teachers before they go out into the world and uh, proclaiming the message of school libraries and what they can do. We've heard a lot today about strategic thinking about how to spend money, and I think you've heard a lot about evidence-based approaches, and I'd invite you to consider what we have to say as sort of a uh, case study of something that has happened over the course of the last couple of years that has provided some really great inequities in uh, services for students in our Commonwealth, and that's why I'm here today. I'd like you to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I echo the remarks of all the other people that have been here today to say this is a hard job that you are tackling and I appreciate the work that you're doing. I'm gonna just highlight some of the things in the written testimony to, to try to uh, bring this idea forward to you. First of all, there really is no direct funding for school libraries. Uh, the budget line item that is in, included in the budget is uh, a combination of monies that go to support public libraries and school libraries through some resources under the Power Library program, but otherwise our money comes directly through um, money that individual school districts and individual schools want to spend on school library services for their students. Each school district, and in fact, in some districts, each building principal decides whether schools will be provided with the resources of a school library program or instruction of a certified school librarian. This has led to some uh, pretty amazing inequities. And if you, take, if you think about being in one school district versus the other, the chart that is at the end of the testimony that's written there details what's happened over the last four years where we've seen a 10% drop in services of school libraries to students in the Commonwealth. Um, we think that this promotes an uh, unjust and an unfair system for the students in the Commonwealth. That is, students on one side of the street go to one school, they have a quality school library program, and on students on the other side of the street may have no school library program. And I find as I go from place to place around the Commonwealth talking about school libraries, people are shocked with the idea that there would be schools without a central working library and a school library person there that can provide training as we face the kind of onslaught of information that we know is out there uh, in our technological age. We have guidelines from the State Department of Education, not requirements, but guidelines that say that every school building should have a library, should have quality resources, and should have a librarian. Unfortunately, Pennsylvania schools are not meeting those guidelines. And if I would call your attention to one of them, that the guideline talks about $35 or $37 per student in an expenditure for school library services. Um, as a result of the State Board of Education school library study conducted back in 2010 at the request of the House of Representatives, we found that most schools are spending one, between one and ten dollars on school library resources. If you think about buying a book, there's no way that that, that makes any sense in terms of the kind of resources that our students need. As a result of the neglect, I've noted in the testimony about the age of the resources that are there. So the average age of uh, some materials, over 75% of our school libraries report that their average age of the materials are over 25 years old. So we know that this is not a good, a good situation. PSLA, after the uh, school board or state board of education study, was requested to follow up on this staffing survey and to try to get responses from each school district to try to document the situation with school libraries. We've had a 100% response for three years, and the fourth year, we're shy one school district, so we'll call it 99% response. And that's the information that's summarized for you on the, on the tables. 
What it, what it shows us is that over the past four years, 10% of the school library programs have been eliminated. 34,000 Pennsylvania students in 19 school districts statewide have no school librarians in any of their district schools. 92,000 Pennsylvania students in 78 school districts have only one certified school librarian to conduct K-12 programs and to maintain collections that benefit our students K-12. In some school districts, a school librarian teaches and directs the library program in as many as 13 school buildings. So this is just an unsustainable uh, approach. Now you may think that this is just the rural school districts or the urban school districts where this occurs, but the figure that I provided for you on the third page of my testimony shows that there's a variety to these, these losses. It cuts across urban, suburban, rural school districts so that our urban schools We've lost 51 library programs over the last four years. The suburban, 44, and the rural programs, 98 uh, school districts out of the 371 that are classified as rural. So you wanna talk about significant evidence-based findings. Uh, we present some evidence there for you on the, in the testimony that shows that having a good quality school program, school library program, can increase the number of uh, students who are achieving at the advanced level in reading and writing. We're, we're talking about a bump, even after you factor out all the economic circumstances of 8% of students scoring in that advanced uh, reading category. And for writing, it's two and a half times. Now, you might say, well, that's fine, but how does that affect education in general? We wanna point you to the statistics or the study that was done that shows that poor students, black students, Hispanic students, kids with IEPs are proportionately benefit more from having a school library program. So I guess what we're asking you for is a, a couple of things. Number one, that you look at the idea that this is something that has been chosen out of schools in our commonwealth. And what we're really asking in terms of equity and fairness is that schools be required to have a school library and a certified school librarian since they are essential pro or components for learning. We really feel that a budget line item for school library resources uh, that creates directly some sort of dollar amount per pupil be designated for school library resources. And that's currently being done in various states around the country. I think we need to consider that here. We talked earlier, and I, I'm, I'm not sure I remember who it was that asked the question, but we talked earlier about do you want size requirements, class size requirements placed in uh, the regulations and the state regulations or not? Well, here's, this, here's an interesting case study of that. If school districts are allowed to spend money however they choose once you give it to them in terms of the basic formula, will they support the kind of things that we, have, we know make a difference to, school, uh, to students? So these three steps are really what we're talking about in terms of providing uh, teaching and learning resources to students to help them meet the academic standards. We believe effective school library programs can be an important equalizer for Pennsylvania students, and we see that equality going away. With that, I'll say thank you very much, and I'll respond to any of your questions. The first question I, I have, um, is, is, is there a trend that these libraries have gone more towards computer labs or computer learning? Is sure. That, is, that, is that part of the... Promoting the emerging uh, resources or emerging uh, internet resources for students is an important part of the job of a school librarian. The question is who's gonna teach those information literacy skills? Who, who's responsible for that in a building once the school librarian is gone? So it's safe to say in some cases, kids have their hands on a computer before their first book they read from front to back cover. Absolutely, and not knowing how to evaluate quality information that they see on the internet, uh, not being taught proper uh, citizenship, digital citizenship, if you will, uh, not being instructed in safety, internet safety, that sort of thing. Because once you take the school librarian out of the mix, who's gonna be there to do that sort of work? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Senator Teplitz. 
Thank you. Um, sure. If, if I if I heard your um, your introduction correctly, you said that you are involved in um, teacher training. Teacher I am now teacher mm -hmm. educa educating at uh, Susquehanna University. That's correct. Um, one of the um, intriguing things uh, that I thought um, was intriguing uh, in the testimony earlier today was a discussion about um, the gap between. Uh, research and practice and one of the superintendents said that um, the um, prospective teachers are taught how to teach typical students and um, if you look at the data for those typical students they do well um, uh, students are not taught uh, teaching students are not taught how to teach atypical students and so then they, they're not equipped to face those challenges um, when they get into the real world. Um, so my question is basically two parts. A, do you, do you agree with that assessment? Um, and B, um, what would you recommend be done if you do agree with that assessment, how to address it? Well, it's a good example because I think there's some parallels here. In my experience with teacher preparation, the state has come in and said, as a part of your certification requirement, you're required to take courses in special education. So for example, our undergraduates have an intro to special ed, and then they have a class that talks about specifically what to do about the different modalities in special ed. and and teaching them. We're required to provide English language learner training. They must take credits in that. That's, that's a requirement that's handed to us by the state. Otherwise, I can imagine that that's kind of inconvenient for teacher preparation programs, and they, they would head towards just the middle. I guess I would say the same thing works here in terms of school libraries. It's kind of inconvenient to spend money on school libraries and to have to make that choice but we needed the guide. We need your guidance. We need guidance from the state uh, to make sure that that's being done, and those resources are being provided for students across the con the Commonwealth. Thank you, mm -hmm. Senator Smucker. Thank you. We understand the challenges for libraries within the school systems. You also have similar challenges for community libraries. Absolutely. I've met with a number of community libraries uh, in my area who uh, have had to cut back hours and make uh, other changes. And I'm wondering if there's any way that the two can work together. In many ways, they're serving, at least to some degree, the same population. You would um, think, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean Yeah, well, so that's, my, that's my question. Yeah. I know there's some examples of universities working with uh, their communities. Uh, why can we not do that more with uh, K through 12 and their surrounding communities? Certainly collaboration is important, but I, I see it as sort of a life cycle of library usage. If you think about it, you get kids into the public libraries early on for their early childhood programs. They go to the school and they have a quality school library program that then reinforces library usage later on and creates more you know, university libraries and adult libraries. So I'm, I would never talk against not collaborating. But I see the school library's role as so different because it's providing support for a specific population and for specific academic standards that a, a public librarian is simply not uh, a part of that picture. We're certified teachers as uh, school librarians, so we have an investment in making sure that student learning is primary. They have a role that's broader than that. And so, while we certainly would applaud any kind of collaboration with the public libraries, they're really different in mission. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. and thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening to this case study of why I think that there needs to be something more than just a funding formula in your considerations. Thanks a lot.